Shavu Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Mesechet Maaser Sheni, we are up to Perigimel Mishnah Bet, today's Mishnah Yot should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svedlana, Aran Baiv, Neliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Minuchatam Began Eden, Amen. Today's Mishnah is going to bring down a machloket about using Maaser Sheni money to buy food that is Teruma. The Mishnah says, En lukhin Teruma bechesef Maaser Sheni, a person may not buy teruma with maaser sheni money because he thereby reduces the opportunities for the maaser sheni to be eaten because of maaser sheni money is spent on churin, which is ordinary food. It may be it may be eaten by anyone as long as he is in Yerushalayim. But teruma, however, is forbidden to non kohanim and even to kohanim or tameh. Therefore, if a person spends his maaser sheni money. On tiruma, rather than on chulin, fewer people may eat it and it will more likely go to waste. And the Mepharshim explain, although maaser sheni is also forbidden to a person who is tameh, tiruma is more restricted. A kohen who is tameh may not eat tiruma until he immerses in a mikvah and then waits until nightfall. But maaser sheni may be eaten by a tameh person as soon as he immerses in a mikvah, even though he is not considered fully tao until the night falls. Like we will explain in Mesechet Kelim, chapter 1, Mishnah 5. So even though both you can't eat when you're Tameh, Tiruma is more restrictive in that you have to wait for the mik- go to the mikvah and for the for sunset for the night to fall. The next time, however, disagrees with Rabbi Shimon Matir, but Rabbi Shimon permits buying Tiruma with Maaser Sheni money, and the Mepharshim explain, Rabbi Shimon holds that although a person may not waste Maaser Sheni or throw it out, he may perform a permitted action even if it might lead to Maaser Shini going to waste. Therefore, a person may spend his Maaser Shini funds on Tiruma, even though it will then be more likely that it will go to waste than if he spends the money on ordinary food. And the Mepharshim explain, this machlok between Rabbi Shimon and the Chachamim, which is the Tanakama, is a general dispute that applies to all sacred items, like we will see in Mesechet Zvachim, chapter 8, Mishnah 3, and Mesechet Shvit, like we saw in chapter 8, Mishnah 7, and the Rab tells us, Ven alakha ki Rabbi Shimon, the alakha does not follow Rabbi Shimon. Now, Amar Lem Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon said to the Chachamim in his argument, it seems logical that Tiruma may be bought, Maaser Shini money, Ma im hekel bizivche shanamim, shu mevi'ani de pigul venotar vitame, lo nekel bitruma, and the Mepharshim explained, Rabbi Shimon's argument is like this, if the Torah is lenient and permits spending Maaser Shini money on shanamim offerings, which is actually how we learned in chapter 1, Mishnah 3, the preferred way of spending Maaser money, even though that could lead the animals, um, that could lead to the animals becoming disqualified in a number of ways, like Pigul, Notar, or Tameh, and Mepharshim explained, Pigul, Notar, and Tameh are ways in which offerings can become disqualified. Pigul refers to an offering whose service was done with the intent for it to be eaten or for its sacrificial portions to be burned after the deadline given by the Torah. So Pigul is the wrong intentions. Notar is meat of an offering that remains uneaten beyond the time given by the Torah. And Tameh is the meat of an offering that contracts Tumah. Any offering that becomes Pigul, Notar or Tameh is disqualified and forbidden to be eaten. So Rabbi Shimon says, if the Torah allows you to spend Maaser Shani money and Shalamim offerings, which it can, even though it can become disqualified in a number of ways, lo nakel bitruma, should we not, should we cert, not certainly be lenient regarding spending Maaser Shani money and Teruma, which has fewer ways of becoming disqualified than an offering does. And in other words, Mithar Shim explain, basically what Rabbi Shimon is telling the Chachamim, is that we are allowed to use Maaser Shini funds for an offering, even though it might become disqualified in a number of ways, and the Maaser Shini funds will then have gone to waste. So isn't it logical that we should be allowed to spend Maaser Shini funds on Tiruma, which has less of a risk of going to waste than an offering does? Amrul of the Chachamim said to Rabbi Shimon, this is not a valid argument. Ma imekel bizivche shanamim shen mutarim nezarim. Nakel bitruma shi asura nezarim. Although the Torah is lenient and allows spending Maaser Shini on Shalamim offerings, that's because Shalamim are permitted to be eaten by non kohanim as well as kohanim. Now, although some parts of the Shalamim offerings are burned on the Mizbech, on the altar, and other parts may be eaten only by kohanim, most of its meat may be eaten by anyone, just like ordinary Maaser Shini. So what? 
נקל בתרומה שהיא אסורה לזרים, should we also be lenient and permit spending מעשר שני on תרומה, which is forbidden to non-Kohanim and can be eaten by fewer people than, uh, than may eat ordinary מעשר שני? And the Mepharshim explain, the, the argument of the Chachamim is that while it's true that a Shalamim offering purchased with Maaser Shini money might become disqualified, we're not concerned in that case with the possibility that the Maaser Shini might go to waste, particularly since a person would have to transgress a Torah prohibition or to disqualify the Shalamim. But buying Tiruma with Maaser Shini money definitely reduces its opportunities to be eaten because it immediately limits the number of people who may eat it. So there's more of a chance that it will go to waste. So in the end, Chachamim say... You can, the Chachamim say a person may not buy Tiruma with Maaser Shini funds, but Rabbi Shimon permits it. And again, we said the Halakha does not follow Rabbi Shimon. The Halakha follows the Tanakama that a person may not buy Tiruma with Maaser Shini money. That is in Abutai of Mishnah Bet. Mishnah Gimel now discusses generally a person must use his Maaser Shini money to buy food or drink in Yerushalayim. The Mishnah is going to discuss a way for a person to transfer the money onto produce owned by another person without buying it. Someone has Maaser Shini coins in Yerushalayim where he must spend them on food or drink but he needs the coins to buy other things which cannot be bought with Maaser Shini funds his friends has produce of Churin in Yerushalayim and allows him to transfer the Maaser Shini coins onto that produce what does he do? the owner of the Maaser Shini coins may say to his friend these coins should have their sanctity transferred onto your produce. The coins then become chulin, and the produce takes on the Maser Shini sanctity. The result is that this person, the owner of the produce, must eat his produce in a state of ta'ara because it's not Maser Shini. And the Mepharshim explain it is forbidden for anyone to eat Maser Shini while he's tameh until he immerses in a mikvah. Of course, he must also eat Yerushalayim. The reason the Mishnah picked the requirement of Tara is to contrast it to the next case where there's going to be a concern that Tara will not be observed. And that one, the owner of the coins, may use his coins for his other needs since the coins no longer have sanctity. Even though the owner of the Maser Shini coins will not end up eating any of it, any of it the exchange is still permitted. As long as the Maaser Shini will be eaten in accordance with the proper laws, Bitara and in Yerushalayim. The Mishnah now discusses whether a person may make such a transfer to the produce owned by Namaritz, an unlearned person who is not careful with the laws of Masrot and the laws of Tumah. The Mishnah says, however, a person may not say this, he may not make a declaration transferring Maaser Shini sanctity to produce to an Amaritz because the Amaritz might eat the Maaser Shini while he is Tameh. Now the Mishnah gives an exception to this rule. It involves the Mai, which we said is produce that must be tithed by rabbinic law, Midrabanan, out of concern that it was not tithed properly. The Mishnah concludes, Ela Bidemai, an exception is if the coins have the sanctity of Maaser Shini taken from Demai. And the Mepharshim explain, Demai is produce obtained from Namaaretz. Since some Amaaretz Aretz did not separate Maaserot properly, the rabbis decreed that when a person buys produce from Namaaretz, he must separate certain Maaserot, including Maaser Shini. Our Mishnah is referring to coins upon which Maaser Shini sanctity taken from Demai was redeemed. These coins must be brought into Yerushalayim and spent on food or drink. Just like ordinary Maser Shini. However, the Mishnah is teaching us since the is obligated to be tithed only as a Chumra Midrabanan, because we assume the Amaretz, we say the Amaretz might have already tithed it, as most Amaretz so do tithe properly. Certain leniencies apply to this Maser Shini that do not apply to ordinary Maser Shini. And the Mepharshim explained, that's exactly what the Mishnah is saying, Elabi Demai, by Torah law, Maaser Shini does not have to be separated from Demai. Its Maaser Shini requirements is only a rabbinic stringency mit Rabbanan, and so certain leniencies are allowed with it. So one of the leniencies is that coins with the sanctity of Maaser Shini may be transferred onto produce owned by Namaaretz if that Maaser Shini sanctity came from Demai Maaser Shini. And that is in Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Everybody, Shalavi Shavuatov. Baruch